Alright guys, Puppy's World here and today we're focusing on the Sound and Vision review out of the Oppo UDP-203 from May of 2017. Alright folks, let's get right into it. Um, Sound and Vision is uh, renowned for doing these type of reviews and for them to give it a top pick like this, um, I would choose nothing else and um, I would definitely trust their recommendation over anyone else's, even mine. Um, you know, we're just going to look at the ratings, and we're going to look at at a glance real quick. They give it an overall outstanding performance uh, plus, a plus for detailed info screen, and it plays virtually everything. I can attest to all those guys. I've ran through every video, every audio file, every um, home video from my phone, every song, every possible file on my computer, and it has played it flawlessly. So I can attest to those. Uh, it gives it a minus, says no headphone output, no support for high definition compact disc. Um, you know, that I can't attest to. I've never seen a DVD player with headphone output before, and I've never even used the high definition compact disc features on those, so I don't think that that's an issue at all. This this is uh, this DVD player does not come with any streaming services included with it, so you're not able to access Netflix, Hulu, Vudu, Amazon Instant Video with this. It's just a proprietary disc player and Wi-Fi or direct Ethernet uh, connected device. Uh, the rating, though, that they give it, I'd have to agree with. A five-star performance rating as a top pick. Uh, they give it for features a four out of five. I'm assuming that's because they left out of the fact there that you can't get on, you know, like Netflix and Voodoo. Uh, it's probably the only reason, though. Ergonomics, they give it a five star out of five. And then value, they give it a four and a half out of five stars. I think they're doing that because... Oppo could have packed in the option to have Voodoo Netflix on there and whatnot, but, um, you know, they decided to keep it um, out of it, you know, and, uh, well, I'm kind of glad that they did. Um, as you get in here to the text, it talks about, you know, the second year of the Ultra HD Blu-ray era, but, uh, you know, in the past, Sony, Philips, uh, Samsung kind of owning the market. Uh, but now with that second Panasonic player out there and with that Sony X800, that UBP Sony X800, um, at about $300, I think that really changes the market in a sense of what's available out there. So for the value, I believe that's why they probably gave it a four and a half. Um, other than that, it's this player is just absolutely, uh, it blows everything else out of the water. It only consists of... Uh, you know, th the three pages here, so um, it ends kind of at the remote and conclusion. Uh, you can buy an Ultra HD Blu-ray player for less, of course, but here in early 2017, I can't imagine you'll find one that offers better performance, flexibility, and build quality than the Apple UDP-203. Can't agree enough, guys. It's probably the best uh, Blu-ray player I'll ever see in my life, if not um, comparable to the 205 when that comes out. However, I'm just going to talk quickly about the audio here. Well, I spent most of my review time with audio Video source material, I did give the Apple a chance to show its stuff on a two-channel audio without video. I limited that to its coaxial and HDMI outputs, which I used for CDs and SACD, Super Audio, respectively, since most AV receivers and preamp processors tend to convert any analog inputs to digital immediately upon entry for routine audio processing, such as an application of tone controls, room compensation, and subwoofer crossovers. In modern electronics, all of these are nearly always performed in the digital domain. Using the analog outputs in such a situation will often result in unneeded digital analog to analog to digital conversions. I agree, guys. Uh, used as a digital transport from its coaxial output, you know, the signal sent to my Marantz uh, pre-pro, the Apple performed very well with clear, detailed, highest powerful bass. I couldn't agree more, guys. Uh, you put this up to any Marantz, Denon, or, uh, um, you know, good Pioneer Ankyo receiver, you'll have no problem as long as it's purchased within the last two years. No problem. Gotta have that HD CP 2.2 though, and it is imperative you have a minimum HDMI 1.4 cable. I'm just going to quickly go into here, guys, the ultra high definition with high dynamic range. All my viewing tests were done with a 65 inch LG, you know, OLED display. Uh, mine were performed with a Sony XPR 850C display and a Epson 3020 projector. Um, my go-to movie was Deepwater Horizon, but more or less Sully, and then I'm also comparing, um, in a later date, I'm going to I'm gonna compare uh, Patriot's Day Blu-ray on uh, regular Blu-ray, DVD, as well as the 4K Blu-ray. And then we've gone up and uh, done a DTS-X test, which I do have to say, guys, is a little bit better than the Dolby Atmos. 
Uh, the DTS-X is amazing sound, specifically out of this guy. And in, um, in a further video, I do something where I stand my PlayStation 4 next to this Oppo, and I put two of the same discs in, one after the other, and I kind of compare not only the picture quality with the high dynamic range, so testing out what this does with high dynamic range compared to the PlayStation 4, such as a device without high dynamic range, uh, looking at both images and also the sound quality of the uh, surround sound. Um, unfortunately, the PlayStation 4 will not do Dolby Atmos, and um, I was extremely happy, guys, to have it to you know for it to have had an, a second HDMI input, but a second HDMI output for audio only. That specifically was a very useful purpose on this guy. But if you are utilizing a setup like mine in a different room, the best thing about this Blu-ray player is, yes, you can utilize it in another room permanently and send a signal in this room via RCA's analog-wise with its 7.1 or stereo audio output. Um, you can run RCA cables into another room if necessary and play your audio in here or come in HDMI. But if you don't have HDMI, you're going to have a problem. So, guys, it's an amazing Blu-ray player. I'd say spare no cost at picking it up. I am only excited and waiting for the 205 to come out. Thank you very much, guys. Please subscribe, and I will be back with more.